I am Dr. Nancy Berriman. I teach courses in human resource management at Wichita State University in the W. Frank Barton School of Business. This is my YouTube explanation of adverse impact and disparate treatment. Let's start by defining these two types of discrimination. Adverse impact was defined in the Uniform Guidelines on Employee Selection Procedures as, quote, a substantially different rate of selection in hiring, promotion, or other employment decision which works to the disadvantage of members of a race, sex, or ethnic group. It is also now called disparate impact. It is important to note that the employment practice that may result in adverse impact may on the face of it look quite neutral. Let's turn now to disparate treatment. Disparate treatment is defined as actually treating employer employees differently based upon their membership in a protected class. We will see that three different types of evidence may be presented direct evidence, mixed motive evidence, and circumstantial evidence. It might help you to remember the adverse impact and disparate treatment if you remember the synonym for dis disparate. The synonym for disparate is different, so therefore we are looking at different impact and different treatment. Let's start by looking at adverse or disparate impact. Remember that the focus is on the effect of employer practices. So depending upon the nature of the case, normally what happens is statistical evidence is presented. There are two major types of statistical evidence. One focuses on employee flows in the organization and the other based upon stocks. Flow statistics would look at hiring, termination, and promotion rates. Stock statistics would compare the presence or the percentage of uh, protected class individuals against their availability in the labor market. An issue in most adverse or disparate impact cases is to, to, to try to determine how much of a difference in rates would be considered discriminatory. The Uniform Guidelines on Employee Selection Procedures describe the use of the four-fifths rule. This is sometimes also called the 80% rule. You should realize, however, that other statistical court tools are used by courts as well. Let's consider the following example. Out of a group of 40 male applicants, 10 were hired. Out of a group of 20 female applicants, 4 were hired. The question that we must ask is, does adverse impact exist? Let me show you one method of determining whether or not adverse impact has occurred. We first take the majority group, the number of people hired divided by the number of applicants. In this case, that would be 10 divided by 40, or 25%. We take this 25% times 0.8 or 4 fifths and we get 20% or 0.2. This becomes our standard. We then look at the minority group, number of people hired divided by the number of applicants, in this case 3 divided by 20 or 15%. We compare this to our standard. 15% is less than 20%, meaning that there is adverse impact against females. The second method is illustrated here. This is my favorite method, but you can certainly choose whichever method you wish. In this method, we do the same thing that we did before in terms of determining the hiring rate for both the majority group and the minority group. 
Again, that is the number of people hired divided by applicants equals 10 divided by 40 or 25 percent for males, 3 divided by 20, 15 percent for females. Now we take those two percentages and form their ratio. 15 divided by 25 percent is equal to 60 percent. 60% is less than 80%, therefore there is adverse impact. After a successful finding of adverse impact, then the burden of proof in essence shifts to the employer to demonstrate that in fact the practice in question is job related and or consistent with business necessity. One of the ways in which you can do that is to demonstrate that the selection practice is in fact valid. Reading the Uniform Guidelines on Employee Selection Procedures will give you some information about how that defense should be mounted. Now let's turn to a consideration of disparate treatment. How do you show disparate treatment? One way is through the use of direct evidence. The employer is shown to treat members of protected groups differently. Evidence has to be presented. Another method is the so-called mixed motive cases. Evidence is presented that indicates that while there was a legitimate reason, it was mixed with a prohibited reason. The defense that an employer can use against a finding of disparate treatment is that there was a legitimate non-discriminatory reason for the practice. This is a short explanation of, ra of two rather complex legal ideas. I would encourage any student of human resources to read case law to further their understanding of these ideas. In addition, you should read the Uniform Guidelines on Employee Selection Procedures.